Good evening. It is 2 a.m. here in Paris, and hopefully I'm talking loud enough that you are able to hear me. And I wanted to know it's, I believe it's Wednesday night, um, Eastern time in this United States at 8 p.m. But I have a message, um, something I have been pondering I apologize, I haven't been able to do more lives on this trip that we are taking. But now that I am in Paris, I should be able to come on a few more times. The time change is a little more manageable. I set my alarm clock so I could get up to share this message because I think it's so important. And so my name is Emily Rose Lewis, and I'm going to talk tonight about prophetic birthing prayers and I'm going to talk about um, how important it is that we see the plans and purposes of God through in our lives and how we can co-create with God and how our prayers and intercession, how our ability to listen and hear from God and the things that we do to make sure that we are aligned with what God is doing in the earth through us, and, and even to know what God's wanting to do in the earth through us is part of it. I might not get through this entire message tonight, and if not, I will come on tomorrow and share a little bit more, maybe Friday. This is so important. So stay with me for this teaching, because I believe it's going to be a great blessing. Share this, tag some people, and I'm going to open in prayer and ask Father God that you would just come lead and guide direct this training, direct this teaching. God, give those who hear it wisdom, understanding, insight. May it be used to encourage their faith, give the light to their path as this word goes forth from your heart to help them, Lord, not to leave um, the birthing table, not to stop short, When the walls of Jericho have come down, Lord, there's more work to be done. There's so many great and precious promises that we have from you, specific plans and purposes that you have designed for your prophetic people in the earth, particularly to intercede and to bring forth and to birth in the earth in the mighty name of Jesus. And so I pray that these keys And this insight would help your people in the mighty name of Jesus to bring these things all the way to completion. So, hey there, Susan. So you guys, comment on this tag. If you're watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. If you followed me for for long, before we went to the Philippines, I was getting a lot of dreams and visions around um, premature births, babies that were... um, you know, abandoned, things like this. And as I was praying into it, I was researching in the Philippines that this is a big issue. The infant mortality rate is really high. There was this tiny baby squirrel that had brand new baby squirrel that had fallen out of a nest outside my house. I took pictures and shared it and was just really, you know, pondering this, praying into it. I shared it with you guys in a post, a video. And as we went, um, to the Philippines, I was praying into this more. God, I have been hearing so much from the Lord. I've been getting a lot of um, insight and wisdom for my own life, more clarity in some of the prophetic plans and purposes. Um, as I've gotten closer to certain things, I've been getting prayer strategies. I'm here in Paris right now as a prophetic intercessor on assignment um, breaking ground about things that want, the Lord is wanting to do here. And so it's actually 2 a.m. right now. I got up at midnight because I wanted to share this because I think it's so important. It's going to help so many people. So as I have prayed into this vision and things that the Lord is showing me about infant mortality rates in the Philippines, I have begun to hear from the Lord because I knew it was an assignment for me there and there, you know, and as I went over there and was meeting needs and talking to people, I realized through prayer and revelation that what the Lord was speaking 
about my assignment is what's more than just in the Philippines. It's to help you all and to teach people and to train people in prophetic intercession and for birthing the plans and purposes and the promises of God, not just birthing, because we hear a lot about birthing, we hear a lot about pressing, pushing, but also once the baby is born, there's still work to be done. And a lot of people, I believe, are birthing things sometimes outside of God's timing. And that's like a premature birth. And it's harder to get a baby healthy when they're born premature. There's extra things that have to be done. And sometimes they don't survive if it's too premature. And so spiritually speaking, God's given you promises. There's promises in the Word of God. And there's specific promises for our lives and that little squirrel, that little tiny squirrel, no hair on it. I got an, a message from the lady today who took it to a rehabber, is fat, doing great. And so I have been praying for you all. I'm praying for the things that God has placed in my heart and doing a lot of prophetic prayers, prophetic intercession, following things through with visions. And I want to teach you a little bit about this and what God's heart is. So this is very prophetic training and teaching. And it is very timely. This is a rhema word from the heart of God right now. Because there are far too many Christians. And this in my own life. God speaking to this to me too. To make sure that we don't have these high infant mortality rates in the spirit realm, that we don't have things that God has promised us, purposes that God has placed for our lives to fulfill. And this is particularly for God's people who are prophetic, especially if you're called an office of a prophet, but it's for the whole church that this prophetic intercession is so important. And I want to teach about it. And teach why it's so important and how some of the steps to go through. And it's really more than going to be one teaching because there's so much to it. But um, if you guys saw, I had a map from the Lord that my son got before we went to the Philippines. That This Filipino man that he met, I think in Thailand, had given him this map of all these areas in the Philippines that he said he just was so sure he was going to go to. And so that's where I started as God was leading me there um, of the different places that we should go there. And we hit all the places on the map. Um, one, one, or two, one of them only Forrest went to. And God's been revealing what the meaning of those are to me in a very personal way that would be hard to explain. But one of the things on that map was fruit. We'll go into this market and get this fruit. and have a picture. I'll share it. And it's just all of this fruit. And a huge stand just covered in fruit. And there's this number 80 at the bottom. And when I saw that picture for us to took, I said, the number 80 is the decade of pay. Um, it's, it's coming into 5785. And um, 80s, the 80s is the pay, which I'm going to talk a little bit about that. And Forrest said to me, that's interesting because Abigail Rose had my phone and she was messing around with the editing buttons and she circled that 80, like edited it and put it somewhere. He didn't tell me exactly what she did with it, but he noticed that she focused in on that 80. And so there's this fruitfulness that the Lord wants to bring in our life, this great fruitfulness. But he wants us to bear much fruit and he has different things and different seasons that he has us needing to be focused on, needing for us to pray through, needing for us to see vision, needing us to dream dreams, needing us to map here, his mapped out path for us, just like in the walls of Jericho. He told him specifically what to do for those walls to come down, but we have to be careful that when the walls come down, we don't quit. That is just furrowing the ground. The walls of Jericho coming down was just furrowing the ground, and we have to break ground. And that's what I did when I was in the Philippines. I was breaking ground for some of the visions and the things that I've been praying through for a while. But when you have broken ground, you still have to work. Like, in order to plant a seed, if you plant a seed, then the ground has not been broken up. The seed, the bird will come and eat it. The sun will scorch it. It won't bear fruit. 
And so our prophetic intercession and our, our willingness to spend time in the word, journaling, hearing from the Lord, seeing the vision that God gives us, praying through the vision that God has given us is so important in order for that thing to come to fruition and to bear much fruit. So this number 80 on the fruit stand, I'm going to talk about a second. So the number 80 in the Bible, it represents the start or duration of freedom from oppressors. You know, Moses was 80 when he went to lead the people out of Pharaoh, uh, from Pharaoh and the Israelites out of bondage to slavery. And as I said, 80 is the number, the letter for pay. And it's the 17th letter in the Hebrew alphabet, which is interesting because 17 is the number of complete victory. It's the number of victory. And pay actually means mouth, the expression, the word, the breath, speaking. So what we speak in the decade of pay is so important. We're coming into our fifth year of that. It comes after the letter AI, which is the I. And first, before we speak, we must see, you know, it's so important that we have our motives checked out. You know, Jesus said, if the eye is good, the whole body is good. If the eye is evil, you know, if the eye is light, the whole body is good. If the eye is dark, how much darkness is in that person? What is that talking about? Well, he, he says that verse after, be careful not to worship money, but not just money. If our motivations are for money, if our motivations are for prestige, if our motivations are off, our idols are more important than God, we shouldn't have idols at all. But if anything comes above God, even good things like um, honor and wealth, those are good things. But if we put seeking those above God, being motivated by those things other than being motivated, motivated by pleasing the Lord, then it is going to affect how we see even what God is showing us and how we go about fulfilling that. And so this is really important that the, the eye comes before the mouth. We see visions. We see um, in dreams. We see what God is speaking to us. And you might be like, I don't get visions. I have um, two dream courses that are so dreams, visions, mysteries. It's not just dreams. We need to be able to see what God is showing us. You know, I allow my daughter to have so much imagination. I rarely show her the television at all. It's always learning stuff when I do show because I want her to develop this. We naturally, as children, see things, have imaginations, but over time that can go away. And so we have to press in to meditate on the word of God and ask him to show us pictures and we can ask for the prophetic gift which is so important in seeing what God has for us so um because when we get a vision as we're praying as we see what God is wanting to do we see dimly we see in part and we got to pray through this we got to keep praying like um, I was praying yesterday morning and I saw fire and I was praying and I saw um, a bridge that had been broken and God was just taking me, connecting the dots to different things and this water between the bridge was showing how relationships with people who aren't aligned with the Spirit of God, who aren't part of what God is doing in our lives at this time, the Spirit of God actually could come between those relationships, but we have to with the world, with people who are walking far from God, we need to be interceding for them. We need to be creating a bridge. And after the ground is furrowed, after there's a seed put in the ground, and so this, let me, let me talk just a minute about, let me explain this Hebrew letter a little bit. I'm going to have to use my glasses for this because I can't. So, um, the, the way that the Hebrew letter is set up, there's a little dot in the middle. And if there's not a dot, it's they and not pay. But there is a dot, so it that is the seed. And it is, um, inside is gimel. It's like a hollowed out place that is the shape of gimel, which is the first letter used in the Bible. You know, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. 
and the word was God and through him all things were created and without him nothing was made that was made. This is from John and Jesus was the word of God made flesh who dwelt among us. And so God's word, he created the universe with his word and we are created in his image and the thing that sets us apart from the animals is that we have speech we are able to speak what one of the things that sets us apart we have soul and so the lord wants us to understand what we speak is so important so this huge fruit stand having this number 80 God was saying a lot of people are having these premature births. A lot of people are seeing the promises and the plans of God not come to pass and wonder what is going on because they may be waiting for me to move or waiting for me to do something. But we got to understand as prophetic midwives, many of us are, um, we need to, not everybody has the same kind of burden. This really is for God's prophetic people for people who have who feel deeply you know if you have heaviness if you have anxiety if you have worry don't just fall under that I understand this and I think when you are called as and everybody should be interceding everybody should be praying every mother every father every aunt every uncle we should be interceding we should be praying the heart of the father but when we are close to the heart of the father Aligned with the heart of the Father. We are, we are looking in the spirit realm, fixing our eyes on what's above, seeing what God is wanting to do through us, seeing what people could be, what God is wanting to do in the lives of other people, knowing that there is this thing that needs to get done that God wants to do in the earth, but the people are a mess, maybe we're a mess, the, the money's not there, the situation, the door is not open. We can't just wring our hands and say, well, maybe it wasn't God. We are to be actively um, interceding, praying through, birthing things, and then carrying those things through to completion as we continue to pray, as we continue to seek the Lord about what's next, what's the next step. Many times, you know, when we hear the word God is going to suddenly move, God suddenly moves. The, th the door suddenly opens. The money suddenly arrives. The people are suddenly in alignment. The character is, is, is grown and um, the unity is made in the home. All of these things happen as we're interceding, as we're praying, as we're um, co-creating with God. You know, and decree is part of it. I'm not going to talk about decreeing because I'm tonight I'm talking about intercession. I'm talking about learning to see vision of what God is doing and pray through that vision. A lot with other prayer people, um, you know, I thought, um, I've talked to a few people, I thought we, we need to be praying for our children. We need to be praying for each other. And hey, Nicole, Jessica, if you're, if you're still on, Jessica. Um, so the seed in the word um, pay means word, expression, vocalization, speech. And it's so important. So the the letter pay is composed of cough and yod. And I've talked about it being like a container. Um, and that seed in there is, is the seed of the Holy Spirit. That is Jesus. That is what we are planting in the hearts of people, in the hearts of situation. We are bringing Christ Nothing that God does in the earth, even Jesus coming into the earth, came through a birthing process, came through a woman um, pressing in. She birthed him into the earth, and they had to raise him. They had to nurture him. So the Lord doesn't just bring us into the promised land, and then we get to sit down. It's flowing with milk and honey, and a lot of people lose the baby. A lot of people, and I have in different situations seen this. And what God is wanting us to do is to be on our guard, to be praying without ceasing. One of the scriptures she spoke to me just tonight as I was taking notes for this message that I think is so important is um, 
Well, one of them is 1 Thessalonians 15, 16, and 18. Pray without ceasing and everything. Give thanks. This is the will of God for you. God wants us to pray without ceasing. But there's another scripture in John 18, 1. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. Sometimes we give up because it looks like nothing is happening. It looks like nothing is shifting. It looks like nothing is moving. But we, ha we have to understand that sometimes we need other people praying with us. There are boulders in the path. There are things that are not aligned. There are hard hearts that need to be changed. There are people that God is speaking to. I mean, whether it's the money's not there for it, the, the people are not aligned for it, the circumstances, the timing, like all of this comes together as we pray. We can't just say we're waiting on God. What? Yes, we wait on God. Yes, we're resting in the Lord, but we are to be actively interceding. You may have seen the post I wrote where Abigail Rose saw an angel when we were in the Philippines in our hotel room. She said she saw an angel. I asked her, she woke her up in the middle of the night. She saw it um, kind of hovering. And I asked her what the angel looked like. She said, kind of like you and kind of like Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz, which she hasn't seen the movie, but we went and saw the musical, not the musical, the ballet that my son was in, The Wizard of Oz. And I kind of explained a little bit to her. She even saw the red slippers. And I mean, this message, I... I can't even do it justice and it's going to unfold more and more, but it's so powerful right now if we really get a hold of this because there is a heaviness that comes. There is a depressing of the life. There is an anxiety. There is worry, fear, and dread that weigh down on us that if we so take it, we can see that is that we need to be praying more. We need to be more diligent. We need to get up earlier in the morning or stay up later at night and pray through things a little more often and be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. To me, you know, life can be really hard as a prophetic intercessor who is hearing and seeing a lot. And a lot of people don't want to deal with that, so they don't even ask for it. But we are to ask that we ought to be able to prophesy. Part of prophecy is foreseeing what God is doing in a situation. We're seeing and understanding the heart of God over a situation and how the, the, the realities don't always align with the truth that God's showing us. Mostly they don't. And that it's not just he's showing us to say, oh, great, this thing's going to happen. You know, you might be in a group of prophetic people and you share all the vision, you prophesy over each other, and everybody goes, I'm excited. And then all the stuff hits and we're like, why is this not coming to pass? Why does this take it so long? And the Lord really wants us to activate our faith. He wants to build up us in our faith by getting in the word, by journaling, by listening, by paying attention to what God is showing us, what he is doing. And as I pondered that, this angel looked like Dorothy and this angel looked somewhat like me. And I thought about what I know about demons from having seen them. My daughter's seen them. They will take the form of what they're doing to some degree. The, she's seen demons quite a few times, not in recently, but um, she says they have fur. They look like animals a lot of the time. And I think it's because they're so base. They're so soulless. They're so unhuman-like. And... You know, I've seen a spirit of gluttony. It's overweight. So when I was thinking, if this angel is, she's perceiving it to look like this, if it's showing up like this, what is the meaning of it? And I knew that I had been getting hit with um, witchcraft. And, you know, when you think, how do you know you've been getting hit? Demons use people. <laughs> and so when certain people are coming against you, when certain people are falsely accusing you, when people are talking bad about you and people you're around like at the office you just feel this tension in the air it's oftentimes it is some kind of demonic spirit working through a person to affect you to oppress you to get you into your emotions and 
And it's important to understand that we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. People are not our enemy. The devil is our enemy. He wants to thwart what God is doing in our lives. And so I thought of Dorothy as she was fighting that witch throughout the movie or throughout the ballet. And also she was fighting for her friends. She was on a journey with other people who felt like there was something they were missing. There was something they were needing. There was something they were pursuing. You know, like one of them wanted a heart. One of them needed a brain. You know, one of them needed courage. She wanted to be home. And in the end, they were seeking this solution. And this is not new age because it's the Holy Spirit was within us. The seeds of greatness are, are within us. The, the purposes of God are within us because the Holy Spirit who is leading and guiding us into all truth and the authorization to do the things in the earth that God's called us to are already ours. And oftentimes we're running after, seeking after, pursuing these things and not understanding we had the power the whole time that we weren't using. And... And so as the Lord is just unfolding this message to me and how important it is when you've been getting hit and you've, you've suffered loss and, you know, things aren't um, manifesting in the natural for what the Lord has shown you is wanting to do to your life. And you're getting hit with financial difficulties and, you know, the devil is trying to cut off our resources. He's trying to get us to fear lack and quit giving and quit planting seed and quit praying because it's not working. But a lot of times when we shift how we perceive what prayer is, it helps. Um, so breaking ground. So, you know, as we are breaking ground, we need to remember the scripture, John 18, 1. Then Jesus told his disciple parable to show them that they should always pray, not give up. And this is where they were go. I believe the parable that was when he was going um, to a wicked leader to get justice. Or it might have been the parable where someone was asking for food. Like continually, continually coming to the Lord. This is what you've shown me. This is what I, you have revealed. And, and pray it through. Pray it through. And I, I can't completely just teach you how to have visions. But it's so important to ask the Lord for the gift of prophecy so that you can see. The way that the Lord sees gives you spiritual insight of the way that you need to pray. And nobody else might understand what's going on or what you're even doing. Or it might look like nothing's happening. But if you're following the plans and purposes of the Lord... He will send you forth into the earth, into different places. He will put people in your heart. He will put plans in your heart. He will, he will show you great and mighty things that you didn't know. He will reveal to you hidden things. And it is the things of God, the hidden things of God, the promises of God, the purposes of God, that if we as a people don't pray, Nothing will happen and it won't be God's fault because he put it within us. He wants us to see it. He wants us to align our lives with it, align our prayers with it, continue to pray for the softening of the hearts, continue to pray for the alignment of the, of the opportunities and the resources. And when you are the prayer bowls to when the rhema, Time. Time is a big thing. My daughter had a certain amount of spending money and we were in Valencia, which was the first place on the map that God gave us to, we went. And I wasn't quite sure. We bought toys for the kids there. We, um, and my daughter bought a little toy watch and it had princesses on it, Disney princesses, which I don't, I'm not too fond of them. No, it might've been Barbie. I don't know, but Anyway, it, she begged for it and had a little picture on it. And I was like, yeah. And, um, but it was a watch. She just wore it for a few days. And 
the fact that we bought in Valencia and then my son took one picture there and the picture was of this big old tree. What we are building prophetically, it was this beautiful old massive tree and the tree grows and the, I believe the, like the, the limbs reach down and create other um, root systems and I'm just praying into this. I'm like, what God is having us do goes beyond our lifetime. The things that God is having us cultivate prophetically is for families to be shifted, for, um, you know, curses to be broken off of our lives so that our children don't go forth in the same patterns, that their lives will be even better. They'll be less affected by the things of our ancestors we need to press through these things we need to believe god that he is able to do what his word he is able to perform it he is watching over his word to perform it the psalm said he will watch over his word to perform it we have to understand that prayer is power complaining is chaos if your eye is bad. If the way you are seeing it, you know, the letter that comes before pay is the word for eye, what is seen. If the way you are seeing things is negative, critical, fault finding, complaining, then what comes out of your mouth is going to be negative, critical, fault finding, complaining, and it is going to block the flow of the spirit moving in the earth through what you are saying as we are created in the image of God. We have this great power and speaking they're both force forces and complaining is releasing in the atmosphere have you ever been around a really judgmental critical person or yourself been in that place it shifts an atmosphere it shifts an atmosphere and you know um like i have I have to be careful but i um you know Sometimes when I'm really in a prophetic intercessing birthing thing, I like to be as isolated as possible. I don't stay isolated, but like here in Paris, we're doing so much intercession and um, like, I don't even want to be around anybody. <laughs> like we just went out and got some lunch and some groceries yesterday and we got up at like 5 a.m. We prayed for two hours. I'm training for us and uh, not for us. Abigail Rose in this forest to, but um, right now Abigail Rose is more my assignment because she's six, but um, let me talk a minute. When they were building the temple, they got rocks from the quarry. They, they chiseled the rocks in the quarry, okay, before they brought them to build so that while they're building, because they have a sword in one hand and they're building with the other, you know, looking out for enemies that were coming against them to try to stop them so they made these bricks in the quarry and a lot of our prayers are making the bricks for what what god is building through us that seems like nothing's happening as we're interceding as we're giving as we're you know doing the things that the lord has called us to and standing on the word and meditating on the word and journaling and writing down um the vision and we're creating these bricks and they come together and we're each part of a bigger picture and we don't always see the full picture of it and it might seem like well, what I'm doing I'm I'm giving an awful lot here and it doesn't seem like a lot is moving but as we continue on and and that's why it's so important to keep the vision the Bible says keep the vision before you and set before your eyes no vile thing I have not been scrolling on the internet and all on the strip. I've just been, you know, really involved with what I'm doing here. And, you know, there's been some great time with my kids. The last day we were in Hong Kong, me and Abigail Rose went to um, Disneyland there, which I'm not a Disney TV movie person, but I like the park and we had a great time riding rides. It was empty. There was no lines. It's much cheaper than Orlando too. And it was great. But um, yesterday, I was doing some research and I started scrolling and I stopped and watched something of like a news situation and I could feel my 
atmosphere change. I could feel my spirit drop and I was like, whoa, it was so, such a shift. We have to be careful what we're setting before our eyes. We have to be careful what we're looking at, what we're meditating on because if you're battling through some stuff, you need your spiritual, um, you need clarity and you need focus. And if you are heavy, I wake up so many mornings in different seasons of my life with a heaviness, with a sadness, with anxiety. I don't just wake up feeling like, woo, you know, like <laughs> that's not how I wake up. I have to pray through spiritual heaviness and things in different seasons. And if I don't, then I'm going to be miserable. And so instead of just complaining and feeling heavy and feeling anxious, we need to get to work doing the work that the Lord has given us to do, which is walking by faith, which requires more prayer. <laughs> because a lot of the things that we are believing for are so out of the realm of natural possibility that if God is not involved, if we are not seeing, connecting, an intimate connection with Him, we're going to lose the hope, we're going to lose the faith, we're going to be worried and anxious and wrought up. So, um, yeah, this was when Solomon, this was when Solomon was building the temple. Sorry, it's from 1 Kings 6, 7. That's when they, they finished the stones in the quarry so that no hammer, chisel, tool was heard in the temple that was being built. And um, sometimes that's what we're doing. So that when we come more into the fullness of the bigger picture of what God is bringing to pass, we're not bringing a bunch of rubbish with it. The people are coming prepared. There won't be, you know, if you're trying to have a lot of employees, they're not going to be bickering all the time. You're going to know how to deal with it. You're going to have already worked through a lot of the stuff as you have done the work in hidden places. Um, so how do you identify when it's time to like break ground? This is what I'm saying. You do it every time you feel something. You don't have to pray for hours. You don't have to wake up and pray all night long. Sometimes there's fasting. Sometimes there's prayers. But every time it, you get hit with a attitude thing that needs to be adjusted with heaviness, with a worry, with a dread, throughout the day we need to be praying these prayers, remembering the promises of God, speaking the word of God, standing on some of the scriptures. Because if we're just waiting for things to get better tomorrow, it's not going to happen if we're not... Um, doing our part and praying without ceasing. It's the will of God that we pray without ceasing. It is the will of God. It's in everything. Give thanks. Pray without ceasing. This is the will of God. And then we need to keep focus. Um, you know, Philippians 3.13, he says, Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended completely grabbed hold of everything God has for him. But one thing I do, forgetting those things that are behind and reaching towards those things that are ahead. Even if you had a bad day yesterday, even if you messed up yesterday, even if you feel completely discombobulated yesterday, whatever it is you're struggling with, God gave you a vision. Yes, your family might be a mess. Yes, your finances might be a mess. Yes, you might need um, some health issues resolved. But we can't look at the mess. We have to look at the promise and move towards that. We have to just get out of the natural mindset. To be a spiritual man, to be a spiritual woman, to be a mature person, we are able to have feelings of inadequacy, feelings of, you know, these kind of feelings and not let us stop us from seeing what God is showing us and agreeing that if he showed us, it can be done. Um, so what goal do you have? Where's your ministry headed? If you're not able to picture it, you need to get some prophetic training because seeing the vision is so important. Seeing what God is wanting to do, how, how you put it together. I was talking about, I saw this vision of fire. I saw this vision of a bridge and this water going before it. And I knew 
the, the vision of the broken bridge with the water between it. Sometimes the Holy Spirit, when you're trying to build a bridge and a relationship, some, the Holy Spirit is flowing in such a way that there's no, there's no way to get to the other side if this other person isn't operating correctly or in alignment with where, where God has taken you. And so it's important that you don't just say, well, you know, God wants us to build bridges. He wants us to reach people with the gospel of Jesus Christ, people who are far from the Lord. And so I had gotten on Instagram to post something and somebody that I follow, I, I cannot pronounce his name. I think he's Russian. He has a book and had fire in the front, and it was about fire, and he told a little excerpt from his book about bridging the gap between us and other people, and I knew my vision that I had that morning about the fire and the bridge being out and this water going, um, the Holy Spirit being the water moving, and I thought, I need to read this book because God is saying something here. This holy fire that he's using to burn off the dross, to burn off everything is not of him, so as we're praying, not just for ourselves, but for others, God is softening our hearts. God is aligning our hearts. God is giving us more clarity. God is moving us from the mundane misery of the natural life into a supernatural enthusiasm to move through our days with absolute certainty that God is moving even when we don't see it and taking us where he has said he is taking us, where he has said we are going. If he says, let's go over to the other side. Thank you, Gary, for the start. I appreciate that. And this brings me to my next point. Um, when we see the hem of the garment, you know, you might not see Jesus completely in a situation. He hasn't been formed completely in a relationship, completely in a heart, in a business. You know, it may still be in shambles, but you see the hem. You press through the crowd. You touch the hem of the garment. We are to pray that the power that is in Jesus Christ, that is on Jesus Christ, the power of God to resurrect, to heal, to restore, to to birth, to bring forth life, and to bring to completion. He says, have I not spoken? You know, he is not going to get you to the place of delivery and not bring it forth. It is not God that is blocking us. It is not God that is blocking us. She breached the garment. She, by faith, she received her healing, even though she probably couldn't see fully Jesus through all that. Um. You know, Romans, we need to pray in the Spirit. When you don't know what to pray, pray in the Spirit. Ask for the gift of tongues. If you don't have it, pray in the Spirit. Pray in your understanding. You know, the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness when we don't know how to pray. And even if you don't have the gift of tongues, the groaning, to take the time, you might not know what to pray, but there's a burden. There's a pressure. Oh, God. Sometimes... You might think your prayer isn't fruitful at all. You don't see anything. All you've done is gone to the Lord and spent time in groans and just, oh, Lord God. Just, it is birthing pains. It is moving in the spirit, feeling the heart of the Father, feeling the broken heart of the Father over the loss, feeling the heart of the Father to meet needs, to bridge that gap. He there are hungry people not because there's not enough food. <laughs> it's not a lack of food. It's not a lack of food. Jesus was able to take just the little bit that is brought to him and feed the crowd. And he needs us to be those people. He needs us to not look at the inadequacy of what we have to bring him, but look at his vast power to work through our weakness to do what we could not do on our own and not have a false humility, which I, you know, I, God's dealt with me about my pride in the past where I didn't think I had pride, that my insecurity and my insecurity about what God has called me to, what he has mantled me for, 
is actually a form of pride. If I let my insecurity stop me from walking in my authority that was given to me by him for specific mantles to do specific things and in a specific office that I have been authorized to do these things by him. There's 17 people right now on just the number of victory that I was talking about, the letter pay. So we got to we got to get past allowing our insecurities to stop us and see them for what they are. That it is pride. It's too much focusing on ourselves. We need to focus on the Lord. So we pray in the Spirit. We pray, pray in our understanding. We sing in the Spirit. We sing in our understanding. We worship. And then when we get peace in the prayer closet, that's not the place necessarily that we need to just stop for the day. A lot of times when the peace comes, when the the... The check comes in the mail that meets the need. We just stop. Oh, this need is met. But the Lord wants us to operate in overflow. He doesn't want us to just have just enough to barely get by. He wants us to operate in overflow. And so when we see the head cresting, when we see the walls fall, we can't go back to sleep. We can't become carnal again. We got to keep going. Keep adventuring out on his word to Remove the inhabitants of the land. <laughs> um, uh, Susan says one plus seven, eight equals new beginnings, which is interesting because I got this Airbnb where we are. It's a lovely little place. It's really wasn't more expensive than a hotel. And the food in Paris is astronomically more expensive than in Asia. So it's a good thing we have an Airbnb. We can grocery shop. Um, but... Um, so we got this place for seven nights and the way that the time in Asia was, I was leaving on the 10th and I thought that I would land. It was a really long flight in Paris on the 11th. So I booked from the 11th to the 18th and I got here on the 10th. I mean, I was talking to her. I'm like, we're at the airport. Should say anything. The, the, the lady who owns this place and we got here late, went to bed and somebody came in the door in the morning. When I got here, there was like sheets laying out and stuff. They don't have dryer. Um, that's an American thing. They don't have them in Asia either. <laughs> but, um, I mean, I'm assuming some people do here, but anyway, I just fold up the sheets. I didn't think too much about it, but the housekeeper came and there was some other things laying around and um, I didn't complain. And so the owner contacts me and she's like, did y'all get there last night? Because you weren't scheduled to get there to today. I'm glad I didn't walk in on anybody. Show me where the key was and stuff. I was like, oh my goodness. So I was supposed to be here seven nights. And I said, how much do I owe you? I apologize. And she said, don't worry about it. I'm just, I feel bad because it wasn't up to par clean. Well, I said, don't worry about that. I'll clean it up. So I got an extra night here, which is new beginnings. And I knew that I was completing some spiritual things here, some assignments here that God's just releasing a lot of blueprints for this next season of my life and giving me prophetic clarity about my purpose and how I'm to go forth in it and interceding for a lot of people, a lot of situations, a lot of countries. <laughs> and, um, so she wrote one plus seven equals eight new beginnings. And that just reminded me that I had seven, which is a number of completion and then got one free added, which is grace. That is the favor of God. And then that equals new beginnings. So I could just feel like God moving and even, even in that. So thanks for writing that. <laughs> um, so we're, have this prayer burden. We pray washing the dishes. We pray riding in our car. We intercede. We put on um, podcasts. We need to be feeding the life of the Spirit. Feeding what God has shown us. Keeping it before us. And not to take on because you. I've at different seasons of my life, I have taken on, and I think there's been ebbs and flows of this, but particularly, you know, 10 years ago when I was doing so much spiritual warfare all the time, which was great. And I still do a lot of spiritual warfare, but I did it then with more angst. And so I'm not saying just carry the burden all we're, we're taking the burden. We're unloading the burden on him. Actually, we're not care. We're not taking it for ourselves to carry this burden around all the time. The whole point of the 
prophetic intercession is to take the burden and dump it on the Lord. Take it and dump it on the Lord. So and if, if your prophetic intercession is making you feel more burdened, you're actually needing to shift the way you're seeing what you're doing. You're not care doing the heavy lifting. You're just seeing what God has said and coming into agreement with it and praying through it and, and being his agent on the earth as point of contact where a heaven opens up over a situation and God is moving. It is to unburden us, not to more, make, give us more burden. And so be careful with that because when I was first growing in all this, I didn't have like apostolic covering mentors about anything prophetic, nothing like that. Um, you know, I was just in a Baptist church and, you know, learning the word of God, which is important and super great, but there wasn't a lot of people operating as spiritual gifts or training me. And so I just, you know, fasted and prayed all the time. I was skin and bone. <laughs> <laughs> and um, anyway, so we need to focus on the goal. This isn't a once-off prayer, and I'll talk about heavenly decrees next. This isn't even what I'm teaching tonight. Isn't about the decree. And this is about breaking the ground to get to the point where you, when your decrees go forth, forth, you have, you're doing it in a place of authorization. You have been given territory wherever the the soles of your feet tread god is giving you that territory where he has placed you where he is taking you where you are stepping down he's given it to you but if we haven't furrowed the ground and we're just decreeing and we're just saying things are going to happen that's where um people say you know that uh, oh it's just a name it claim it thing you know we're not just naming it and claiming it we have been authorized by heaven given a vision Shown certain things God is wanting to do in the church, in the earth, in relationships, and meeting certain needs and how he's going to do it. And not saying that you're going to get all those parts. Because, you know, there's a five-fold ministry and we're all different. Um, you might not be in the five-fold ministry at all. You, as part of the body of Christ, we each have a part. And, and so I'm not saying that you necessarily are going to get this overarching vision for the church like somebody in the fivefold is like a and walking in the apostolic wood but you're going to get certain things for your life and your purpose and your part and the lord wants to give that to you and as you connect with other people in the body of christ and come together and discuss those things and and hear and have good spiritual um leadership and community the different parts coming together or how God is birthing things that go beyond us in generational purposes being met and established. And there's a great ministry in the Philippines already there that I was able to connect with and partner with financially, seeing what they're doing, knowing that they're doing it. I mean, we even, God even took us to a couple of places where I saw their vans there. I saw them teaching people there. So they're doing what they're saying they're going to do. And and for now, that's one of the ways that God is having me so into the people there. Um, or us, whoever's partnering with me. Okay, then strengthen your faith. Use the word of God. It's living. It's active. It's powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the division of soul and spirit joints and marrow is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart we have to strengthen our faith we have to walk in not waver in belief like abraham had unwavering faith that god was going to perform what he had promised he got to that place he gave glory to god he was fully convinced i mean he's also a great example where they stepped out and tried to do stuff on their own but we need to get to that place we need to find out what God is doing, where he is leading us, where we are heading. And don't look at the natural when it's not all coming together because you might just be making the bricks, like for Solomon's temple. And then you go and lay them and then it comes together. There's other people building along beside you in the kingdom of God and it's, it comes together. Jesus. Um, strengthening your faith um, and then we
we have to sub submit ourselves to God. We've talked about that and resist the devil. We have to war against the devil by submitting ourselves to God and resisting him. And it's so important that we bind the devil, we resist the devil, we submit to God so that he flees because we have to understand the devil's not just going to hand these things over. We have enemies on the pro land, the promises of God. We know this from the scriptures where it says the Old Testament, what happened to them was for us, for help us to understand the ways of God and how he operates as he gave them the promised land and they had to go in and possess the land. So there's devils. <laughs> there's hard hearts. There's financial needs. There's medical complications. There's, there's things in the natural and things in the spiritual demonic realm that are hindering and blocking and, and that's why you got to be careful not to judge what is going on with other people, not to be too judgy, thinking we that know all of it. Because, you know, I uh, listened to or saw a post from a minister I really respect. And, you know, we say things sometimes as ministers that aren't always thinking of every angle or might not be tenderhearted. We mean well, and I'm sure this person did, saying, you know, something that essentially like, fighting devils isn't kind of a thing you know god jesus is a good shepherd he's going to protect us well the bible says we're wrestling against powers of darkness and so we're still here wrestling yes we have the power of christ in us to enable us to submit to him and resist the devil but there's a resisting that goes on there is there is spiritual warfare that takes place which the main part of it is obedience, but also to recognize those spirits and to bind them and to tell them where to go is biblical. <laughs> and so we need to understand that, not to set our sword down and don't get don't let the vision go from our eyes and recognize that yes, we are gonna be attacked by demons often through people. <laughs> and and I think this is something that's really difficult for me because I don't want to hurt other people's feelings. I don't want people to feel rejected. But sometimes God puts you in a birthing season where you can't just be around everybody. You know, if there's people that are operating in the demonic, that is distracting. <laughs> they can't be in your inner circle if they're dealing with all kinds of demonic activity. You know, God might remove certain people and you have to pray and love them from a distance because all that kind of demonic stuff going on is a fight against the purposes and plans that God has wanting to birth through your life. And, you know, even sometimes extended family, sometimes family members can be used by the Lord, I mean, by the enemy. And so we have to get discernment about that and how do we war against that because we're not fighting against people. We have to recognize that these are not, it's oftentimes it's the enemy using people. And also, you know, false accusations or people being bitter towards us or people coming against us. We don't, we don't need to let that bother us too much because it's, Jesus said that kind of stuff is going to happen. That stuff, kind of stuff is going to happen, but nor do we need to um, openly sit underneath or around mockers and sinners. And the Bible says, don't sit with scoffers. Don't spend a lot of time with those people. Get in and out of there. Minister them if God is having you minister to them. But who we are aligned with has everything to do with the purposes and plans of God coming to pass in our life. And so we need to be careful of our alignments. And in the birthing room, not everybody's going to be there. <laughs> not everybody can be there. And that's hard. That It's hard, but we have to go forward with God. Remember the scripture. Do Forget what lies behind and press on to the good things that are ahead. You, I, I, I believe so strong that we should be praying for our extended family. You know, there's a lot of family members that I'm praying for that are Christian that have, you know, 
for whatever reason, through woundedness or whatever, um, just gotten demonically <laughs> attached. And, and so we have to pray for them. And we can't take that kind of stuff personally. It will be the biggest distraction if you take that kind of stuff personally. We are not wrestling against flesh and blood. And we have to bring people before the Lord. We have to bring leaders who we're like. We could just talk about how evil they are and how they're pawns and all this kind of stuff. But we have to realize that God is sovereign and we need to intercede. We need to pray. We need to ask the Lord's will to be done in our lives. But please do not take more of the burden. Don't allow your intercession to steal your joy. We should intercede to a place of joy, to a place of peace, to a place of calm, delight, assurance of what God is doing. And, and sometimes you have to be so in tune with the Spirit. This is why I want to um, teach about soul healing. I'm doing it on September 25th. I'm doing a two-hour Zoom on soul healing because when our souls are wounded, a lot of times it hinders how we're hearing from the God, how we're hearing from God and moving in the spirit. And it, we have to be sensitive even in our intercession so that our intercession itself doesn't become a stumbling block to us. Because sometimes if your motive is wrong, you're interceding because you want a person around you. You know, you need this thing for to feel safe, like money or. You know, when the motives are off because of woundedness in your soul, then your intercession can become witchcraft, <laughs> like a form of witchcraft, trying to manipulate and strong arm. You're praying out of a fleshly motivation rather than seeing what God is wanting to do and agreeing with it, which is a much different kind of intercession. It's the kind of prayer that the Lord is bound by his word to answer. May your will be done. May your kingdom come. We're praying, may your kingdom come into this relationship. May your kingdom come into the hearts of your people. And then we must be able to see, and this is why being able to see and discern visions and, and asking the Lord for seer anointing, prophetic gifting to see. Sometimes I will see a vision and, and prayers I'm praying into it, and it's not completed. The vision doesn't come into fullness. You know, as I'm praying, I can see things shift. I can see things change. I can see things align. And I'm like, there you go. Like we're praying here in this city for purpose. And God's purpose is to come to pass. And I, I can see what God is doing. I can see it shifting and changing. And sometimes I will hit a wall where it's God saying, that's enough of that for now. <laughs> Move on to the next thing. You know, God operates in time. I, if you're still listening, if you've heard earlier on in this teaching where Abigail Rose bought a watch, she's very prophetic and the Lord speaks to her. And it was in Valencia, the first place on the list to where we were to go in the Philippines. And it's about timing. Many times it's about timing. And so if you are impatient or if you need something to happen, a certain way to feel safe, to feel um, um secure in your identity to feel loved or these different things that as wounded people we sometimes struggle with then we have a really hard time understanding that there's a timing to things there it's God's time <laughs> it's not our time but we we pray and we can pray in ease that okay enough prayer about that that's gonna be in his hands. God has some other things to do there. And I put this part in his hands. I hope that I am making sense here to some of y'all that it's ringing a bell that you can begin to intercede if you have interceded in a way that has made you a miserable person, <laughs> an anxious person, a person who is like, any minute God's going to change their heart any minute God's going to restore the relationship any minute the money's going to come like <sighs> God's taking care of us we are in a process we're only one piece of this larger picture and uh, while we do need to be focused and consistent we need to live in the present 
see, forget what lies behind, learn from it, live in the present, see what God is doing in the future, but find out what our present circumstance, what our present assignment, what our daily portion is, and live in passionate pursuit of intimacy with God and pleasing the Lord, not in the purpose fulfillment coming to pass and seeing um, and becoming all, you know, fulfilling all that God's called us to, becoming all that he's called us to be. If we're focused more on intimacy, if we're focused more on um, gratitude and the things of the present, we can flow in a better way to be effective in our prayer life. And, you know, maybe you've avoided this kind of intercession because you've carried like I used to and still sometimes have, you know, when it's a heart issue, sometimes with a child or a spouse or something like that, it's so dear to your heart. It's really, really can take a little bit of time and healing to, for your own heart, for your own soul to um, be able to align in a pure place with the heart of the Father and come back into the stability of God is enough. <laughs> he really is. And he's got good plans and he's doing good things and he changes seasons and he opens doors and he aligns things. He's done it before. And if you're afraid and anxious and feeling like you need this to change and that to change, I just pray that this encourages you. And if you didn't see the beginning, I pray you go back and listen to it because it builds and it's just really something that God's showing me that he really wants to console us, to give us beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness so that we be called trees, be called trees of righteousness, like that big tree that Forrest took a picture of in Valencia. This tree of righteousness, bearing good fruit, walking in stability um, and and, and seeing the plans of God come forth in the earth, uh, the planting of the Lord that he may be glorified. <sighs> Jesus. I pray you will not be discouraged. I pray you will not think that you are wasting your time. You're not wasting your time. You're spending time with the Lord. Your prayer, we may not be doing it perfectly, and there might be just a few little adjustments that hopefully this will help you make in your intercession or that it will it will drive you forward towards more intercession and help you to recognize that it your intercession is working your prayers are working it doesn't always be seen what God is doing behind the scenes in the natural that's why we must know that he can be trusted and if what he has shown us is from him, then it will come to pass. And do not be discouraged. Do not be dismayed. Do not be, and, and, and I, I know this is easier said than done, but I just pray for each one of you that you and, and myself as well, that we would not feel powerless. <laughs> like we have angels and that angel showed itself to Forrest to show me in a time of heaviness, of spiritual warfare that was going on while I was in the Philippines, that the power of God is within me by the Holy Spirit to get to where I'm going, to fulfill what God has called me to. And the witchcraft that comes against you can't stand. The, you know, the, Somebody reached out to me. They're struggling with a um, a marine spirit. They were talking about. I want to. I want to do a teaching about that. I mean, there's there are demonic powers, and we need to be aware of what we're dealing with and how they open doors. You know what the open doors are to let them come in and just wreak havoc on our life, but also to understand that there's bad things that happen that have nothing to do with what we did or didn't do. There's other people. There are demons that come against the purposes of God, just period. A lot of times when you're just doing the right thing, you might come under to attack. I mean, anybody who teaches otherwise isn't reading the Bible. I mean, Paul was beaten. He was stoned. He was in prison. I mean, 
we're going to have things come against us, but the favor of God and the goodness of God and the mercy of God towards us enables us to go through all those things and holy confidence that he's working it all for good and that his supernatural power is at work within us and that he is bringing forth something far greater than we can imagine. And the Lord does want to prosper us even as our soul prospers, he wants us to operate in overflow. He wants us to operate in miracle working power. He wants our prayers to be effective. He wants our relationships to be fulfilling. He does want us to have a blessed life. The blessing of the Lord makes rich and adds no sorrow to it. There's a proverb that says that. So he wants to bring us through the battles. He wants us to learn to rise above the drama and the hurt. And when we do get hurt and when we do take hits, he wants us to trust that he is our healer and that he can heal our soul and he can mend our broken hearts and he can take us into more fruitfulness than we could have ever imagined. I see this fruit stand. Forrest took a picture of it and that number 80, we have to furrow the ground we have to plant the seed and then we have to make sure that what we are speaking aligns with what we have been shown and not allow our eyes to to rest on to focus on and to be distracted by what hasn't changed or what's gotten worse <laughs> you know we can't be distracted by these things and so we also need to remember the word that says that we are to present to God our needs and we are to present our needs to God in faith and we are to believe that the Lord wants to is able to and will meet our needs and this is in small and large ways and that he is not miserly and that he wants truly wants to perform his word to do above and beyond anything we could ever hope ask or imagine we need to rest in that be healed by that word, be healed by that truth so that our motivation isn't to go after the thing we need or hang on to it as if it is an idol where we are able to trust the Lord. If it's, um, we are able to trust the Lord and his ways in our life, even when we don't understand them and we won't always understand his ways and the way that he is going about doing things. But we can trust him at his word. That as we are praying and coming into agreement with what he has shown us. And interceding through the burden. Interceding through the fear. Receiving the healing. And receiving and walking by faith and not by sight. That it will come to pass. It will come to pass. I know that we are all Many of us, there are so many people within the church that are hurting. There are so many people in the church that are um, broken. But the Lord wants to heal us and make us whole. He died that we would be free. He died that we would be free. That we, he, he gave us his word so that we would know that we are authorized to pull down heaven into the earth realm by walking in the awareness that we're seated with Christ in heavenly places and that the devil really is under our feet and Lord we ask that you change our perception that you give vision to your people that you anoint them with the oil of joy for the journey that if they are in a heavy season if they are weighed down and burdened may they come to you and make the request known to you and then receive the peace of God that transcends all understanding because I shouldn't even be at peace right now with this financial need. I shouldn't even be at peace right now with my kid in this problem. I shouldn't even be at peace right now with this court case before me. I shouldn't even be at peace right now because I'm looking for a job that hasn't come through. Whatever it is, when we make our requests known to God in faith, that he hears us and that he desires to do us good and his goodness and mercy are chasing us down, then we can ask and then believe and then receive from him the things that we need. 
And we must obey the Lord. We must obey the Lord. That is such a kingdom key to receiving because the obedience is the key that unlocks the door to receiving so many of the things that God has for us because we have to be aligned. We have to be positioned. We have to plant seeds of obedience and we we have to we we have to understand that we are made righteous in the beloved we are in right standing with god and we need to act like it we need to be what god has called us to be and that is the righteousness of god in jesus christ not perfect but ever ready to admit where we have missed the mark and come back into alignment and so i pray god for the strength, for the empowerment, for the revelation to walk in the authorized overcoming power that you have poured out with and through your Holy Spirit that lives within us through the death, burial, and resurrection of the cross, through adopting us into your family, being co-heirs with Christ, receiving from him, the assignments that you have given us and the authorization to walk them out. Lord, may we go forth in peace. May we go forth in the presence of God. May we recognize the alignments and the relationships and the way that we are spending our time and our money and in our efforts. May we recognize when we are not flowing with you, Lord. And may we come into the flow of your spirit, that Zoe life, eternal life, and understand we will live eternally. We have eternal life. And that our lives were bought with a price. And so we have to honor you. And Lord, we want to honor you. And we pray, God, that you would enable us to because we need your enablement in the areas where we are weak. We need your enablement in the areas where we are anxious. We need your healing in the areas where we are broken. Lord, put a hunger and thirst in us for righteousness, in us to meditate on your word. Lord God, help us to lay down the sin and the shame that comes along with it and receive the cleansing blood of Jesus to cover our sins both yesterday and today and help us to walk in grace towards ourselves and to others and to receive that grace that we would no longer be condemned and be um, operating in accusation against ourselves that spirit of accusation that is the devil who's accusing the brothers but lord may we operate in a desire to please you and not out of shame and not out of in uh, our own focus on we need to be more adequate we need to be more this or we need to do less of that lord help us to focus on just flowing and love for you receiving love from you loving ourselves and loving others lord god we want to know your love experientially understand how loved we are understand how you have given us a name and you have given us an identity and we are royal we are we are so valuable in your sight. You died for us. You have bestowed value on us by paying so great a price just to be with us. And we want to know you more. We want to see you clearer. We want to hear what you have for us. And we want to be freed from the shackles of distraction and the love of the world, the love of the money, the pride of life, the deceitfulness of riches. And we want to be fully surrendered whether anybody else understands us. No matter who criticizes, no matter what the cost, Lord, because we know that you have promised nobody 
gives up anything in this life without receiving a hundredfold return in this life with it persecution but you are a god that has said we will reap what we sow and if we sow to the spirit by um the obedience of releasing what needs to be released moving forward where you have told us to move forward single-mindedly lord that you will bless our lives and enrich our lives and, and cause us to walk in greater measures of authority to operate in your power and the earth. And you will enrich our relationships and you bring divine replacements and you also restore. You renew, you revive and your resurrection power gets to work in us as we make a decision to, to, to surrender knowing that even that decision can't be followed through without your grace flowing to us. And so we just pray for more grace, more grace, Lord, more favor on our lives, Lord. Lord, I pray that you would favor us, that you would look upon us with favor, that you would see us and remember your promises to us that you will meet all of our needs to according to your riches and glory in Christ, that we don't have to worry, that you will show us the way, that you will provide for us. And as we honor you, Lord, you, you will honor us. You will honor us as we honor you, as we esteem you highly, Lord. You lift up the humble. You lift us up. And so I thank you, God. I thank you, God, for the position that you have put us in, wherever we are, that, that we can be useful vessels in your hand. And I pray for everybody under the sound of my voice not to give up, not to allow discouragement to, to, to make its home in their heart, but to war against those things in prayer. <laughs> and meditation, and speaking, and worship, in Jesus' mighty name, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, Father God, that there would not be stillborn, spiritual stillborn babies, that there would not be pre these premature uh, <clears throat> births that require so much more from us than is necessary. I pray, God, that you would help us to follow all the way through, not just part of the way through, not just out of poverty, Lord God, not just out of poverty in every way, but on, onto the fullness and the riches. You became poor that we might become rich, Lord. We do not want just to ask for the bare minimum, Lord. We ask for overflow. We want to meet needs wherever we go. We need an overflow of joy. We don't want to just not be depressed. We want to be overflowing with joy. Bubbling brook. Lord, we don't want to just be able to pay our bills. We want to be able to, to um, sow into the kingdom and sow into the, the ministries and, and help the poor and the widows and the orphans. Feed the hungry. Visit the prisoners. Lord, we, we want, Lord God, to have richness and time. There are people who are stretched so thin trying to make ends meet, maybe as a single parent or as on a one, you know, one working parent in the home. Lord God, I pray that you would multiply people's time. Lord, that I believe is something that you desire for us, that we have time, that there are margins of time where we are able to see needy people along our daily path and not be so stretched for time that we can't stop and help them. Stop and give them a kind word. We need margins in our lives, Lord, and that you are able to help us to operate in the realm of the kingdom where we are not bound by time like the people of the world because of lack, lack mindsets and, and true areas, pockets in our lives where there is lack. And so I pray, God, that your fullness would come and fill us to overflow in our finances. Fill us to overflow in our emotions. Fill us to overflow in our generosity with our time, with our talents, and with our treasures. 
In the mighty name of Jesus, may we walk as Christ did in the earth and be sensitive to the way that you are moving in time and space. And Lord, may you multiply everything that we plant, all of our seeds of prayer and, and, and giving and fasting and service, Lord. I pray that you would multiply their fruitfulness and that we would be like a fruitful vine. In the mighty name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name. I love you guys, and I'm going back to bed. It's probably, I don't know, I'm six hours ahead of Eastern time. So God bless you, and we'll talk soon. I want to talk, I'm going to talk some more about decreeing. Let me also say, and I'm going to post this, maybe when I get off, I am doing a soul healing seminar like uh maybe two I say two hour zooms and sometimes they end up being three hours but you can also catch the replay because I think it's such an important issue because we will prosper even as our soul prospers and so these broken pieces of our soul the areas of our life that we haven't gotten healing from that our wounds are still distracting us and keeping us from the level of effectiveness and and I'm in this battle with y'all <laughs> because we get new soul wounds you know and so we dealing with soul wounds and the mind the will and the emotions and keeping the blood of Jesus flowing and the word of God touching those places and recognizing the truth about what's going on in situations with ourselves so we can apply the word of God the right way it's so important because it's such an, a hindrance. And you might be somebody like this or know somebody like this. I know many people who are in the same place 20 years later. Actually worse. Um, because, yes, I have actually sent an email about it. Um, it was in my last email. So if you're on my email list and you haven't gotten it. It was just day before. It was yesterday, I think, maybe. Um, check your spam box because sometimes those emails go to spam. I need somebody who's more computer literate because my email, I, I need to somehow shift where the email's coming out of and I don't know how to do it. And I've researched and researched. But anyway, check your spam if you're on my list and you haven't been getting it. And then put, don't put these in my spam box anymore. <sighs> I only send like two a month. So um, anyway, I love you all. Appreciate you and uh, going back to bed. <laughs>